If you've ever vacationed at the beach, you've probably picked up a few shells along the way. With just a few steps and a little bit of time, you could create these lasting keepsakes of your memories. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do is make sure our shells are clean. And I have pre-mixed some KS Resin Liquidy Split. It's about 10 milliliters. And I've also put in a small amount, about a quarter of a teaspoon of Sesso Mica Powder in Silver White. And I am just taking my finger and I am painting this. It really is, it's finger painting. I'm painting this inside of the shells. And it's a thin layer, but it's pearly white and it's so gorgeous. And look at how that shell on the left has those neat uh, ridges. And I think this is just this barnacles from being in the ocean for so long. But that one is going to be spectacular. I'm not adding a very thick layer. I just want enough to coat the inside of the shell. And we will have, you, you will see that the resin, you know, even though I'm putting the resin all, you know, up to the edge of the shell, as the resin settles, it is going to pull down into the lower area of, of the shell, but that's okay. The resin color will still stay where I've, where I've painted it with my finger on the, the edge of the, um, of the oyster shell. And sorry about my sniffling. I've got some allergies going on today. It's quite annoying. Middle of summer and I have allergies, but um, so on this shell, because it has so many little crevices and, and cracks, I'm trying to be really careful about getting it into all of the, the um, you know, little crevices and I think I just have a little bit too much in there, so I'm trying to kind of swipe it off and um, add it to the other shells because I was trying to be careful of having enough so that I could, you know, have enough resin for all three shells. And then I'm just smoothing it out and spring it, spreading it around a little bit more. And one more quick swipe just to make sure I have everything smoothed out. And it kind of gives me a chance to think about what I want to do with these. So I have been saving these pearls forever. And I have just a bunch of costume jewelry that I've just... Um, you know, cut apart. I've gotten these at thrift stores. I've gotten these at yard sales and I've just cut them apart and put them in a jar. And I thought, you know what? I think this would be a perfect use for these. And so this little craggly shell, I'm just taking the, the fake pearls and I'm putting them inside the little, um, light little crustacean parts of the shell the shell so, so almost like it came from nature that way I don't know if I'm explaining that right but I have um, pearls in various colors and various sizes and I'm just trying to get it to stick to the resin in there in various areas and um, filling in the little gaps I didn't want to put too much but I'm just trying to put the right ones in strategic areas. So random, but also strategic, if that makes sense. I'm digging around for just the right one in there. I think I have like, I don't know, three or four different sizes of these, um, these pearls. And every time I see them at the thrift store, I, I do snatch them up because you just never know when you might need to make a oyster shell ornament with pearls. Um, anyway, it's really fun. And now just one more. And you know, I have tinkeritis. I got to keep adding more. So let's grab another handful and start adding them to these other shells. 
couple in there. The big one, medium one, and then the teeny tiny one, which is kind of a really neat uh, antique vintage -y color, which is really cool. So that's enough of the pearls. And now I've got this, um, I don't know, it's just a bunch of these little teeny tiny shells that I've collected over the years at different beaches. Like when I go on vacation, I just pick up a, you know, you know how you always do when you're on vacation, you're just picking up random shells. And I think I got these in, I don't know, Mexico. And um, some of them are really teeny tiny, but I'm just putting these in random spots on the shell. And now my favorite part is adding a little bit of crushed glass. And this is just, I think this is, um, this is from the Dollar Tree. These are bags of the fake sea glass that you can buy. And I have uh, crushed it with a hammer. I am going to do a video on how I've done that. And I'm just taking the smaller pieces of the crushed glass and adding it um, all over the shell. It just, this is really, really pretty. It. I'm trying not to get the chunky pieces because I didn't really want it very chunky. So this is more of the, the fine pieces and it's just adding a little bit of shimmer and a lot of texture to the, to the shell. Now I'm just gonna let these sit until the resin is dry. So the resin is nice and cured and normally I would use my Dremel tool with a drill bit attachment to drill a hole in the top of the shell, but these are so thick these are, um, I don't know, probably a quarter inch thick, and I just don't, I just don't want to drill a hole. That that's just too much. It would take forever, and it would be noisy, and I just don't have the patience for it. So, I am having to rethink this, and I think what I'm gonna do is use some UV resin and my raffia ribbon and use the UV resin to attach the raffia ribbon to the back of the shell. Now you could use a hot glue gun, but my personal experience with hot glue is on something like this, it's gonna dry out. The hot glue is gonna dry out and eventually get brittle and it could break. So the UV resin to me is a little bit more sturdy. Um, and because I'm selling these at an art and craft show, I, I definitely want something that's gonna have some durability and some, um, uh, well, durability. I want it, I don't want it to dry out and have a customer come back the next year and say, hey, you know, give me my money back. So. I love UV, UV resin. It's so easy to work with. I haven't, I've only started using it recently. So I'm, I'm really pleased. This is a little kit that I got on Amazon. It's a Let's Resin is the brand. And it came with this little light, two bottles of resin. Um, I think a little silicone mat and a couple of little cups and stuff. And I've never used it before until just recently. So I'm really happy. I think the kit was like, I thought it was ridiculous. It was, I don't know, $14 or $19 or something like that. So, um, really super easy to use. And I guess you could also use E6000 maybe or a tacky glue or Gorilla Glue or anything like that. But the UV resin is just instant. Once you put that light on it, it, I mean, after a couple of seconds, it's firm and it's, it's going to stay there. It's not going anywhere. Um, so here I'm just adding a little bit extra to make sure it is stuck on there and oops, going to turn it back on, do that other one. So the backs are kind of plain with the, the, um, raffia ribbon, just stuck there. Uh, to me, it's kind of ugly. So I'm taking more UV resin and a little sea turtle charm, and I'm just kind of hiding where the end of that raffia is. I think that just really finishes it off. It adds a little bit of something extra, and it's a little classier than just seeing 
you know, the tail end of a ribbon just stuck there. It just looks like an afterthought. So I'm glad I went ahead and did that. So we are almost done, but we're gonna do one extra step to finish off the front now. And I like using paint pens to finish off the edges of the, the shelves when I make them. And I probably should have done this um, before doing the resin, but um, well, I can do that on the next ones. And this is a gold paint pen. I think I got it on Amazon. Not really sure of the brand. I think I could, I could probably look it up. I think it's called Overseas, but I can look on my Amazon history and put a link down in the description. Um, and it's just really easy way just to finish off the, um, the edge and just give it a little, a little bit of, you know, class. So I don't want to use gold on this last one. It just seems like silver is the right one for this one. So I'm using this other paint pen that I just got in, I'm not really crazy about using this one on the shelves because it has a fine tip and I could use it for other things like drawing and, um, but I would rather have a broader, fatter tip like my gold pen. And I, I have a fat tip silver pen somewhere. I just can't find it. So um, I will We'll keep this fine tip pen for other uses, but probably won't use it again for these shells. But it is a pretty color, for sure. This is the last and final step that makes such a difference. It is plain paste wax, and you can get this at Lowe's, you can get this at Pretty much any hardware store and look at the difference it makes so the back of the shell is gonna have kind of a chalky finish it's not salt it's just um because shells are made from calcium so it's just the i guess the calcium chalky calcium buildup i don't i don't know how hell else to describe it but it's kind of like when you put stain or varnish on a piece of wood and it just makes the grain of the wood pop out. Well, that's what the wax is doing to these shells. It's just taking off that chalky, chalky finish. Um, you know, like when you wax your car and you put, put the wax on the car and then you buff it out and it's, you just get shiny because you're taking off all of the, you know, the, um, I don't know what is it called? Calcification? I don't know. Um, but anyway, it just, it really does make a difference. It's kind of hard to see in this picture, but it really does make a difference. And you're just going to rub it on there. Really, that's all you do. Rub it on and rub it off. Wax on, wax off. And here they are all finished. What a fun project. It has really so many possibilities. You can use all kinds of little embellishments. You can get as simple or as fancy as you want. These are just really, really elegant and I love them. I appreciate you watching and I hope you learned something new today and become inspired. Thanks again. Bye.